Hello again, this is Sculpt January number two, and this time it was Delight. Hopefully I'm gonna pop up on the screen this time. It's exciting. Uh, thank you very much for all those nice comments about the last one, which was the deep sea. Uh, all my links are in the description uh, for different things like the tablets that I use, and the setup, the brushes, all those things. Uh, do remind me if there's anything else, uh, do ask questions I should say, if there's anything else that you want to see. Some people have been asking about, some people have been asking me about tutorials. Uh, yes, I probably won't be able to do any in this particular month because it's quite busy. Uh, but I might be, if it's a small thing, then I might be able to fit it in. So do um, ask and I'll see what I can do. So uh, today was delight and uh, I, yeah, I was a bit stupid again and this one was five hours so i'm cutting it down i'm being good i've cut it down from what the, i don't know what it was last time probably about five hours actually so uh it's not it's not going well uh i'm spending way too long on them um but i quite like this one um i enjoyed it i wanted to do a pose and that was the main thing i wanted to get out of this to practice doing poses uh, so you can see me here hopefully doing uh rigify again so get the rig in rigify uh, rig the character early on so I did spend a fair bit of time uh, on the base mesh but once it was rigged once it was posed I should say uh, so I set up the rigify meta rig put the bones in and started messing around with some poses uh, which was my main objective for today I know it's sculpt January but I'm thinking about my own learning and my own development which you should be as well I think uh, so I'm trying to fit in things that I want to really think about I'm not very good at uh, cartoon characters. It's quite a skill, I would say, to be um, sort of an artist and be able to um, adapt your models so that they um, are sort of caricatures or cartoons. Because you can't take it straight from reference. You have to sort of understand uh, the objects. I'm waving my hands around again, aren't I? I'm looking at myself on the screen. <laughs> Mustn't do that. Uh, you, so uh, yeah, to, you, you can be an artist, um, but to be a really great artist, uh, you need to be able to step away from your reference images at times and then be able to uh, adapt that and uh, make it into something unique and your own. Uh, there was a bit of a pause there, must have been a toilet break or something. Uh, okay, so um, I've posed the model. I actually put it onto a timeline as well and set up different poses. So I keyframed them uh, so I could choose between which ones I wanted. And that's quite a nice idea. It's like thumbnail sketching in a sense, uh, where you're uh, planning out uh, what route you're going to take. Uh, because often, and it's a classic beginner's mistake, is just uh, the first thing you sort of plan, you go for. I do that quite often actually, it's quite bad. You should plan a few things, adapt it, uh, change it around. Good pre-production work makes for good production work. Uh, but I'm really bad for that. I often think, oh, I've got an idea, I'll sketch it out. Yep, I'll do that. Uh, rather than plan it out and do several stages and several thumbnails, which you certainly should be doing. Uh, I say that to my students all the time. Uh, but I don't do it myself, uh, it's very naughty. Anyway, uh, so also I uh, cut the character up, I did the head separately, because once it's posed, you can't use symmetry. So um, the things like the head, uh, certainly you rely a lot on symmetry. Uh, so I thought I'd do the classic, uh, do that as a separate object and then Boolean it in later. Same with the hands. Um, I didn't want to go really detailed for this because it is a character and it takes quite a long time. It certainly does for me anyway. Although I've seen some people they're doing some amazing characters already uh, in Sculpt January. I'll talk about those later. But uh, you do, it's amazing some of the artists out there and how they can do all these things in a day. And you think, oh man, I've got a long way to go. But uh, I'll try and be encouraged rather than disappointed in myself instead. Uh, so yeah, it took me a long time to do the face. Again, like I was saying about the caricature style, the cartoon character, the cartoon style. And uh, it took me ages uh, to try and get somewhere with it. I couldn't seem to get the mouth right. It's a delighted expression. Uh, I suppose that's the whole point of doing expressions is that you sort of get used to uh, trying to move the face around in different ways and taking yourself out of your comfort zone. But a cartoony expression seemed really tough. I wanted to exaggerate it, so a really big smile, uh, but it looked a bit goblin-y. Uh, and so I was sort of disappointed for a long time with this and I was getting a bit sort of oh no it's not gonna work but I'm gonna have to post it anyway and look like an idiot it, I think it came together roughly in the end but uh, the face was the hardest bit definitely 
I was going to do some eyes, but then I thought I'd just quickly close them uh, because you have that sort of uh, expression. I better not do that in future. Um, you have that sort of expression uh, when uh, you're delighted sometimes. Sometimes you have your eyes really open. I'm try I mustn't act these things out, otherwise I'm going to look a fool on the internet because I'm not going to do any jump cuts. Uh, but uh, you have your eyes uh, really open uh, when you're uh, delighted or you have them tight closed. Stop acting out. Uh, and uh, getting the size of the head right was difficult because characters, uh, character styles, I say, keep saying caricatures, caricatures have really big heads uh, and they look really silly. Uh, but even stylized characters have big heads, uh, usually. And I wasn't quite sure where I was going with this because I hadn't got a plan, as always. I just got a rough idea in my head. Uh, so uh, getting those things right was, was quite tricky. Uh, but I sort of roughly got round to it in the end. Often with female characters, I have a tendency to um, sort of make them sexualized in a way, uh, which it, I think that's just because all game characters are, and so you're sort of used to that, seeing that sort of, especially fantasy uh, is the genre I love, but they're so highly sexualized, uh, and I think that's, that's a bit bad really, isn't it? Uh, need to get over that as a gaming community really, don't we? Uh, so um, I wanted to give it a sort of lighter touch, a more fun touch, a more innocent touch. Um, hopefully I sort of achieved that. Uh, the, here's me doing the hand, so I did those separately. And uh, yeah, I had I used the reference. It, I think the hands may have looked a bit manly, a bit bulky, uh, and they certainly were until I sort of scaled them down and got them into place. Um, but it took me a little while with the hands as well. It's those details that tend to really be time consuming and you've got to be careful not to spend too long on one um, sort of detail uh, and disregard the rest of the model. Always, as I said before, spend lots of time on the base shape and the silhouette because that's the majority of uh, what looks good in a sculpt. Uh, we're very quick at picking out silhouettes and outlines of shapes. So make sure your silhouette looks good from lots of angles, rotate round and then add the detail. Uh, I can't stress that enough and that's something that I kept doing wrong for a long time when I started out sculpting. Uh, I'm slowly getting there, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I'm all sorted and the best sculptor in the world, certainly not. And looking at Sculpt January you think, oh wow, there's, like I say, a long way to go. Uh, but we're getting there uh, and hopefully you're having fun doing this as well if you are taking part. Uh, I'm certainly having fun, it's really good fun because you can really express yourself. Uh, I'm very lucky in that sense because uh, running a YouTube channel you can kind of always express yourself in your own way and you're, you are your own boss as it were, uh, so that's great. Okay, uh, must be another toilet break there or something, uh, just a pause on the screen. Yeah, so still working on the face as you can see, slowly getting this smile to work. I suppose I probably should have put the teeth in earlier because it looks a bit unnatural without teeth. Uh, so it. it uh, I'm still learning with these things. Uh, I don't uh, often um, do enough. I don't do enough sculpting, uh, really, and that's why I love Sculpt January. It forces me to uh, do lots of sculpting and uh, improve my skills. So yes, I just did a really basic thing for teeth. I didn't want to do any uh, extra detailed modelling, but just sort of position those so I could see that the expression was starting to work, and it seemed to be working at this point. I probably should have done a bit more with the neck um, and uh, boolean it in at this point because there's no need to um, overdo it on the um, on details of the face separately at that point. Although I still wouldn't have had symmetry, so uh, maybe I'm, I'm babbling now, pointless stuff. Okay, so uh, we're getting there, starting to do the clothes. There's lots of different ways of doing clothes, actually. Uh, you can uh, sort of do a uh, like a sort of retopo and then draw the clothes out uh, which is sort of pasted onto your model. I just quickly uh, grabbed the, um, what's it called, the clay strips brush and just sort of built up the mesh. Uh, and for sort of tight clothes that's absolutely fine. Uh, what, what I'm hearing is, uh, did someone post that the other day? Yeah, I think they did. Uh, they were posting that um, generally people use sort of cloth simulators now because clothing's quite tough. It, it is tough to get it look, to look really good. Uh, to get it look to, to get it to look okay like I've done here isn't too bad. You just sort of add creases around the place and you sort of think about where things are stretching and stuff, uh, and it looks 
relatively okay, but to get it look really to, to get it to look really good is quite a tough one. Uh, so uh, yeah, so clothing simulators and things like that uh, make cloth simulators uh, makes a lot of sense really. Uh, and I suppose that's something you need to think about uh, as well is um, if you're working on something that can be easily automated uh, in the future, then uh, make sure you're diversifying your skills. I talk about this a fair bit in my blogs, I think, um, uh, and future proofing yourself and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, do think about that uh, when you're, if you're starting off and you're thinking, oh, I want to learn Blender. I always think that with hard surface modeling because, or people that are doing realistic modeling, uh, because I imagine computers in the future will be able to take a picture of something and make it really quickly. It won't be, we're not that far away from that. So we've got photo scanning already. But to do a character is a bit tougher and I think you're a bit more future proof in that sense. And there's a bit more creativity to that. I'm not wanting to uh, put down anybody that does hard surface modeling. Um, I think it's really amazing what people do. Um, but just thinking about the future, I think a computer may be able to do that um, better than you can. Maybe I'm being harsh. Uh, but they, they will be eventually, they'll be able to do everything better than we can soon. Who knows what's in store for us. Anyway, I really am babbling now. Uh, let's uh, get back to the model. So you can see me doing the creases and folds. I had quite a bit of fun with that, um, experimenting with the brushes, the curve settings on the brushes. And uh, sometimes I was using a draw brush. Uh, that was in, especially in the last one, just a draw brush with a very uh, tight curve. Uh, so it's got a sort of point to it and uh, pushing in and pulling out and that creates some nice creases. Uh, so I enjoy doing that. Um, otherwise I just do the crease brush and that does quite a nice job. Okay, where are we up to? Uh, yeah, so now I'm bullying the um, pieces together. Uh, oh, um, JNM's uh, plugin Fast Carve uh, is, is really great. Um, I tried that uh, just this morning is it this morning? Yeah, um, to check uh, whether that was going to uh, help me or not, and it definitely will. It's a really nice plugin. I used to use Bool Tools, and uh, that was great. But uh, JMM's plugin is really nice as well. I'll try and put the link in the description. Please remind me if I forget. I'm quite busy at the moment. <laughs> I'm really uh, forgetting lots of things, and I'm not doing uh, enough of all these different jobs that I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, but having fun—that's the main thing. Having lots of fun doing it. Uh, okay, so yep, still doing the creases, still doing the clothing, and it, uh, yeah, having a, quite a good time doing it. Uh, feet, I always used to, well, I used to struggle with feet. It's not too bad now uh, to get that shape. Uh, there's something about feet that are quite tough. Um, and ankle bones, I always forget which side is slightly higher. So the inside is slightly higher than the outside in terms of your uh, ankle joint. Uh, and I always forget which way around they are. Uh, I should know these things, really, shouldn't I? I should just automatically know as an artist. Uh, after boolean and uh, bo after booleaning the objects together, uh, there is obviously a fair bit of tidying up to do, and uh, getting that right uh, and getting your shape back in uh, position and your silhouette back in position is important before working on those things and adding any extra detail. So again, it's another thing about uh, base model first, the silhouette, the outline first, then your details really important. I tried to keep this um, to a relatively low resolution. I'm starting to think I, I go way too high, way too early, and there's really no need for it because uh, once you put smooth shading on, uh, it does a nice job if you've done a fairly nice outline. And really you only need high detail for uh, when you're using the brushes with sort of multi-resolution and you have to turn Dime Topo off for that. And it, my computer's running a lot faster because I'm not adding uh, lots of mesh, lots of polys. Uh, so try and keep as low a detail as you possibly can is my hot tip of the day. How about that? Okay, we're still going, the hair, uh, the hair's not great. And I was really running out of time thinking I need to get this finished. Uh, so the hair was a little bit uh, rubbishy. Uh, if I'm honest, but uh, it was okay, and it kind of added to the character's uh, sort of the feeling of the character anyway. Uh, so there we have it, uh, my finished piece, uh, and I'm relatively happy, uh, quite pleased. Um, hopefully, uh, you like it, and um, uh, do make sure uh, you get across the Discord server if you want to chat to me or put a comment in the description. 
uh, get across to Sculpt January as well. Here's um, me looking at some Sculpt January work and uh, it's just great. Uh, so do uh, have a look through the Facebook group. Uh, that's where everybody's posting their stuff. I think you can probably search for the hashtag as well on Twitter and uh, Sketchfab uh, where you'll find a few nice pieces. Sketchfab's great because you can really study the model and that's quite good for us. Uh, so some fantastic work in Sculpt January. Make sure you get along to there and uh, like all the people's work and encourage them as much as possible because it's quite a, it is quite a tough thing and people are putting loads, loads of effort. It's just fantastic. Um, also, uh, there's uh, some people who've put some stuff on the Discord server. Uh, my favourites are from Manuhu, uh, Manu Who, uh, who's got this sort of, uh, what, there's a special name for these fish, and that is brilliant, and his work looks uh, fantastic. And who's the other one? It's um, ORVB uh, with their work. Uh, well done to you both, and uh, uh, keep on going, keep on sculpting, keep on enjoying yourself. Uh, so uh, that's uh, it, I think. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so it's. Um, chest uh, is the next one so join me for that uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time